In this section, we're talking about issues by age group. We went through preschool and elementary school, and now we're going to focus in this lecture on middle school. Middle school is a really, really hard time. It is the hardest time most people will agree for the children. Maybe preschool is a harder time for the teachers and instructors and caregivers and um, safety is a big risk, but, um, but for the child themselves, middle school is awful. Also, most institutional heads of schools that we work with that are preschool to 12th grade, they have told me in many different ways the message um, is similar. They have all said, if we could get rid of our middle school, that would save many problems. That basically a lot of educators find that they've mastered how to deal with um, and enrich um, preschoolers and they've mastered elementary school and they've mastered high school and the college admissions process and we won't talk about um, high school in this uh, registered children's teacher training because it's um, not part of the Yoga Alliance curriculum um, but schools there just is I'm not sure there's any way to master middle school but what we can do is we can get educated about what is going on in middle schoolers' minds and knowledge is power. And that, if, if we can't make it smooth sailing, because sometimes, um, sometimes in life, you know, things are a struggle. You know, they say a butterfly couldn't fly if it didn't, its wings wouldn't be strong enough if it didn't go through that struggle of um, breaking through the cocoon. Um, so even if we can't eliminate the struggle for middle schoolers, at least we can understand that um, it's not something that we did and that there is a struggle going on and we can use some principles of yoga to maybe detach a little bit, not take things so seriously, observe the situation, respond from a place of abundance, try to redirect behaviors through compassion, kindness, and positivity, and lead by example so that maybe on that particular day, that middle schooler might not stop their tent or tantrum, but maybe the way that you or I uh, deal with it in a calm, de-escalating way, maybe those behaviors will be observed by the middle schooler and retained, and maybe as they mature, they will draw on those positive experiences of how to um, sort of let um, commotion pass in a positive way. So anyway, developmentally, let's talk a little bit about what middle schoolers are facing. So uh, they're changing. So, you know, their bodies are changing and going through puberty and some of them are not changing. So for the children that are maybe late bloomers, they might not be having physical changes, but maybe they're having emotional and social conflict because they're not changing. Or maybe they're happy they're not changing, but they're scared that they might change in the future. Um, sometimes with these changes, we have found in some of the populations that we serve, that this fear of death emerges with middle schoolers, that they um, now feel like they're one step closer to their own um, mortality. You know, I maybe some of them are losing grandparents and then they realize okay there's grandparents and then there's parents and then there's me but now i'm getting my period or now i'm growing facial hair um you know at, whether they're male or female and um and that sort of awareness of the life cycle um 
can be um, scary for them. Many middle schoolers uh, start to be very aware of their peer group and of judgment and body image issues. Also, um, sort of weight management. Um, as children go through puberty, their metabolism changes and um, their parents might be trying to encourage them to be healthier, but then it relates to um, hurting self-esteem or um, creating body image issues. So, you know, one of the struggles is how do you sort of educate children about, um, fine, maybe if you're five, you can eat a pack of Pop-Tarts, but when you're 14, you cannot eat a pack of Pop-Tarts and feel good and not let it show for a lot of people. And, um, you know, no one should be, uh, having pop tarts, but no, no judgment here. It's a judgment free zone. But um, you know, a lot of a lot of that is an issue too. Um the habits that um children have had are now starting to um manifest themselves in ways that are more evident externally and maybe providing conflict for themselves of how they perceive themselves. Um, Another thing is that children now are increasingly on social media. And one of the benefits I believe that we can give as parents and educators for middle schoolers and that yoga can help with is decision making. Now in yoga, um, it's not group therapy, so we're not going to um, necessarily talk to the children about what current decision they're trying to make, you know, should they break a rule or not break a rule. We're not necessarily talking about the specifics. However, case studies have showed that when a child or even an adult takes a deep breath and the oxygen goes to the brain, then it leads to better decision making. If you think even anecdotally, people will say, just calm down and take a deep breath, right? Like if somebody is rah, 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 someone might say, just calm down and take a deep breath. And the idea is that when you take a deep breath, that um, it sort of gives you a second to think. And maybe that avoids an impulse decision. And in general, our impulse decisions lead us down a bad road. And in general, our decisions made from a place of compassion and of abundance are more positive decisions and that can have a positive domino effect. So um, reminding children to take a deep breath when they're in middle school, that can be highly effective. Uh, middle school is a time where children are not necessarily so eager to take direction from parents and caregivers and educators. So this is a time where by empowering a middle schooler, even sometimes a middle schooler that seems a little bit out of control, empowering them to say, take a deep breath and think about this. How would you handle this situation if you were me? Um, you know, if you were uh, teaching yoga and somebody was tearing the mat in the back, you know, how would you feel? You know, what would you do? How would you handle the situation? Would you uh, discipline the person? You know, maybe the child at the time um, might be sassy and not um, thoughtfully answer that question, but I do think even posing those questions tells the child that you're respecting them as an autonomous individual capable of making their own decisions. And I believe that that start of the respect relationship and treating them as a decision maker, I believe that ultimately that helps foster them to take some more responsibility 
and um, to be a little more conscientious. Um, just other reminders of this age group saying one of the things I like to say, it's a Maya Angelou quote, but it says, and I apologize to her if I'm misquoting it, but the, um, the essence is when you can do better, do better. And so for this age group, I love to say, look, you are in middle school. It's one thing when a five-year-old does something because they, you know, break something because they like the sound and they don't know, but you can do better and it feels good to do better. Like, let's do something that you feel proud of, not do it so you don't get in trouble or do it because I said it, but do it because you are awesome. You know, like I tell the kids, you are awesome and you deserve to have integrity. You deserve to feel good about your actions. You know, you deserve to um, be the leader. Oh, that's another thing too. Sometimes children in this middle school age, when they misbehave, they're just trying to get attention. I think that with the self-awareness and awareness of others, um, negative attention can come into play. And so sometimes by um, preemptively giving students in this age group, giving attention seekers in this age group um, positive attention, you be the class leader, um, that really helps. One of the things I like to do um, in this age group is I, I tell kids, I, said, I say, um, you know, 5,000 years ago when yoga was invented, people were, um, you know, going off and working and they were adults at 14. And it's the economics of our society that keeps kids at home all these years. And I said, you know, when you're with me, you know, we're, we're going to all be um, autonomous adults capable of our decision making and I'm going to treat you with respect and you treat me with respect. Sometimes when, um, and again, uh, everybody would need to modify this of what's appropriate in their classroom. Every classroom is so unique. I do not have the answers. I truly believe there are no gurus. It's just um, sometimes having a conversation and different perspectives st can stimulate the own answer within you. Um, or sometimes uh, you might watch a video and nothing is relevant and it just empowers you to say, oh, I don't even need her. I, I, know, I know more than her. So that's good too. Like I don't want uh, to be a guru. I want um, the folks watching this to feel empowered. So. Even if you hate it, I think it serves a purpose because it just shows you how awesome you are and I should be taking um, your course. But anyway, um, with this age group, I find that when you empower them to, to be leaders, then they start um, to act um, more respectable. And sometimes they just really, really, really needed one person to believe in them. and. Um, I believe in you. Thank you for believing in me to take this course. And that concludes um, the section on special issues by um, school age demographic for children and um, developmental issues. Thank you for your time. Namaste.